Hello everyone and welcome to the Governor's Arts Awards Small Arts Organizations nominee event. I'm standing here in the amazing Prescott Center for the Arts. We're going to meet Robin Allen in a second. But I have to say, the thing that I'm getting to do now by traveling around Arizona a bit more, even if it's just me and another person in a space like this, just really completes that story that it is the arts that A, have suffered the most and are the most ready to get back to work. The things that these arts organizations are doing, small and large, is nothing short of a miracle because they're providing services, some are providing help with vaccines, some have totally re-engineered their programming outdoor, indoor, and this space is a great example of that. So I'm really, really honored to be here for this nominee event of the 40th Annual Governor's Arts Awards. We had a lot of nominations and we can never recognize everybody that's doing great work. You know, the fun part about a party like this is you get to celebrate some, and, but we wanna really celebrate everybody. So congrats to all the nominees and all the finalists you'll hear at the end of this. Please support them in any way you can. Donate, show up, leave your subscriptions in place, and they will help restore the economy by bringing us back out when it's safe. I'm Robin Allen, and I'm the Executive Director for Prescott Center for the Arts. And you've got a, a little bit of a renovation happening here. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, facilitated by COVID, but this was already part of your plan. It really was our way back. We um, knew that we this is going to be going on for a while. And of course, when this whole thing happened, our first concern was our patrons, our ushers, they're all a lot more large majority are seniors. So we shut down quickly and easily. That was the easiest decision we made to keep everybody safe. But then when we imagined our way back, we, we knew we were going to be renovating the main stage. Um, and it just kind of made sense to turn it into cabaret style with socially distanced tables because we were in the process of trying to get a liquor license. And we actually found a new way through that with a club membership so we're able to now give one dollar for every ticket we sell to go towards the historic building guild which will keep this preserved forever so i mean it just cabaret have an alcoholic beverage we're going to have some restaurants cater for us and help them back and so it's been we did a little sneak peek in november when the numbers were better and it really is going to be exciting in here and this is not your only space now either. It's not our only space because we had this amazing, you know, summer was so tough for all of us emotionally and suddenly, you know, we, we decided that we needed to start our fundraising. We waited until the food banks were full again because they were empty up here for a long time. And so finally, when it was seemed right to, co to, to come back, we started our fundraising and within a month, we received an anonymous donation that almost completely funded our capital campaign. We still have a lot of fundraising to go. We're still with everybody else applying for PPP loans and trying to survive because the money was allocated for the capital campaign, which we'd put on hold. We didn't think that was going to happen. So anyway, a miracle happened and we're, we were able to renovate this and put all new lights in here and sound and um, it's just going to be phen phenomenal. Now, this fund that we received with the capital campaign means that we can now start breaking ground on our new studio, 99 Cent Studio Theater. We'll have rehearsal space. We'll have classroom space for the kids. We we had to do this to be able to grow our youth program because it's you know we were always vying for time and space in here. But now with the new building, we can grow our youth program, and um, we did an outdoor. Uh, concert during the summer you know as a way back and discovered how oh, wow we, instead of a courtyard let's do an outdoor amphitheater so now it's going to be a real arts center with two galleries an outdoor amphitheater studio theater and of course this gorgeous cabaret <laughs> so that is a, a, a tremendous future ahead it i'd really love is. to hear just a little bit about the way you pivoted in such a moving way to serve the community which is something that people didn't expect of arts organizations, although arts organizations are made up of caring people. So tell us a little bit about how you pivoted to- It was so enlightening for us to understand how we could help during an emergency because it was scary for all of us. We had no idea what this was. We were so worried about our patrons and our ushers and I, you know, I, it kept me up that night after we closed. Not that we closed, but what could we do? And then the next morning I woke up and I thought, that's it, I know what we can do. We converted to PCA Serves and we started calling all of our patrons, over 6,000 of them. We put an ad in the paper 
to the community, to reach out to the community. We put radio spots out there for PCA serves. And basically what it was, um, before all the deliveries were sophisticated as they are now, you know, we were bringing a medicine or do they need anything from the grocery store or whatever they needed. Because the one thing that community arts centers have, well, theaters in general, is a lot of volunteers that also are younger. So our family theater volunteers and all of those folks. And so we learned what we could. We masked up, we gloved up, and we made deliveries to folks and really just called to make sure they were okay. And um, if they wanted a song, someone would come and sing them a song. And it was just so emotionally uh, fulfilling to know when you're, when you're suffering that you can help. And then your focus is on where it should be and taking care of the community. And it, it, it will always have PCA serves now. We relaunched it again because now we're helping with the vaccine. It's so confusing with the vaccine. And so we're calling them all again. And we've got a whole team that's working on that to reach out to all of our patrons. We're, again, we're gonna advertise to the community because we're confused. I'm sure they're confused. And so if there's any way we can help walk them through getting registered, if they're interested in the vaccine, we wanna make sure we get them the help that they need. So it's like I said, it was such an a, amazing thing to understand that you know, we, yes, we serve our community. We know we serve our community, but what can we do during an emergency? And we have all the infrastructure to really make a difference. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot going on, and as an executive director, you love everything that you do. Is there one or two programs that are uh, on deck that you're excited for um, in, in the coming months, whether it's an outdoor thing, a gallery, or another leg of PCA serves? Well, we're continuing, you know, with our youth trying to keep, keep our um, kids active. And so we're, we're going to do our YPF, which is Young Playwrights Festival. We're going to do that online again. Um, the, where children um, submit a 10 minute play and it's adjudicated and then it eventually comes to fruition and performance. And we're hoping that by the summer we'll actually be able to do something in person and here, you know, socially distanced, masked, and uh, have the kids have an opportunity to perform again. So that's exciting. And then we also have our um, scholarship competition. And that, again, that we're going to be doing that online. Um, we've been the scholarship program has been over 30 years now. We've been providing opportunities for kids to performing arts or uh, the visual arts, um, 3D. You know, the, the competition is to help support them and whatever their journey is going to take them, whether it be they're going to go on to community college or whatever, these funds are meant for that. Awesome. Thank you for doing what you do, Robin Allen. Everybody come visit Prescott Center for the Arts. Please do. Okay. We're ready. <laughs>
And the finalists are Dancing in the Streets, Arizona from Tucson. Sounds Academy from Phoenix. Young Arts Arizona from Phoenix. And the Yuma Orchestra Association. Congratulations to all the nominees and all the finalists from this year's 40th annual Governor's Arts Awards. We'll see you Friday, March 26th at a restaurant near you and online. Thank you.